Cozumel has long been known as the Island of the Goddess. The Maya called it Cozumel, or Island of Swallows, and built sacred temples to the moon and fertility goddess Ischel. But what if the Maya weren't the first to set foot on this beautiful island? What if long before sacred shrines and trade ports, Cozumel had already welcomed other seafarers, whose stories never made it into history books? Before we start, I'm on a road to get 1,000 subscribers as a small channel. If you want to help me, please subscribe. Today, Ancient DNA is pulling back the curtain on a forgotten chapter of Cozumel's past, and the results are turning assumptions upside down. Cozumel lies just off the coast of the Yucatan Peninsula, a jewel of limestone and reef surrounded by the turquoise Caribbean Sea. Traditionally, it's known for its role in the classic Maya world, a pilgrimage site visited by women seeking blessings from Ixchel and later a stop along sea trade routes connecting the Yucatan to Honduras. Archaeological sites like San Gervasio give us clues to this vibrant Maya presence, with plazas, temples and stone roadways crisscrossing the jungle. But despite the deep Maya influence, the earliest human traces on Cozumel predate these structures. Artifacts found in caves and middens suggest human activity well before the Classic period, and now ancient DNA from Cozumel is showing that the island's first residents weren't just Maya, they may have belonged to entirely different populations, some arriving by sea centuries before the Maya even set sail. Extracting ancient DNA from a tropical island like Cozumel is no easy task. The heat, humidity and calcium-rich limestone all accelerate the decay of bone and genetic material. For decades, researchers believed Cozumel was too degraded for successful DNA recovery. But thanks to a technique known as hybridization capture, scientists are now able to extract and sequence tiny fragments of ancient DNA from well-preserved parts of the skeleton, especially the dense petrous portion of the skull and durable teeth. These fragments are compared to known global reference data sets at specific points in the genome called SNPs, which can reveal ancestry, migration patterns, and even population admixture. In the case of Cozumel, Skeletal remains from cave sites and coastal middens were sampled using this method. What they revealed was astonishing. These early individuals didn't genetically resemble classic Maya populations from the mainland. Instead, their DNA clustered with groups from much farther away, suggesting a complex and layered human history. Long before Cozumel became a Maya sanctuary, it was likely inhabited or visited by people from other parts of Mesoamerica, and possibly even from beyond. Archaeologists have unearthed stone tools, shell ornaments, and charred plant remains in layers that predate Maya construction by centuries. In some sites, obsidian tools from central Mexico and Gulf Coast jadeite beads have been found in contexts dating to 2,500 years ago, long before San Gervasio was built. Even the remains of now-extinct dwarf fauna suggest a period of human presence long enough to impact the island's unique ecology. These clues were puzzling, but without clear cultural markers or written records, early researchers could only guess who these first people were. The assumption was they were early Maya, venturing offshore before their cities rose inland. But DNA tells a different story. These early Cozumel residents were genetically distinct from classic Maya. Their ancestry pointed instead toward coastal archaic populations, people who may have island-hopped across the Caribbean long before pyramid builders reached the island. The DNA findings shook expectations. When the ancient genomes were mapped using principal components analysis, a genetic tool that places individuals based on their DNA similarity, they didn't align with classic or even pre-classic Maya samples. Instead, they clustered closer to ancient coastal groups from the Isthmus of Tehuantepec and some Caribbean Archaic Age populations. A few individuals showed affinity to ancient samples from Honduras and Nicaragua, suggesting a southward or eastward migration by sea. This wasn't the story of Maya expansion. It was the story of maritime travellers, perhaps fisher-gatherers, arriving in dugout canoes from distant coasts. Some may have been related to early Central American foragers who followed currents along the Caribbean rim. Others may have been linked to archaic populations known to inhabit islands like Cuba and Jamaica thousands of years ago. This reshapes how we think about movement in the pre-Maya world. Mobility wasn't just inland, it was maritime, and it reached Cozumel, long before the Maya carved stelae or built altars. The genetic data from Cozumel shows signs of at least two separate migration waves. 
The first seems to have occurred over 2,000 years ago and involved groups genetically distinct from the later Maya. These early people likely arrived from the southern Gulf of Mexico or Central American coasts, bringing with them seafaring skills, marine foraging traditions, and stone tool technology. Then, between 1,500 and 1,000 years ago, a second wave arrived, this time unmistakably Maya. Their DNA matched that of mainland Yucatan populations from the Classic and Post-Classic periods. They established religious centers, built causeways, and transformed the island into a spiritual outpost. But what's notable is that even as they established a foothold, they didn't entirely replace the older lineages. Some remains from later periods still carry traces of the earlier genetic profile, suggesting a slow blend over time. Yet the distinction between the two groups remained remarkably sharp in the DNA. Cozumel didn't become Maya overnight. It layered new people over older ones, each leaving their own imprint. Despite living on a small island, the ancient populations of Cozumel seem to have maintained cultural separation. Genetic analysis reveals only limited mixing between the early archaic-related group and the later Maya settlers. This is supported by archaeology, too. Older remains tend to be found in caves and along the island's rougher northern coast, while Maya structures dominate the central and southern plains. Differences in burial practices, diet and tool use also hint at diverging lifeways. Cozumel's terrain may have contributed to this isolation. Thick forests, rocky shorelines and lack of freshwater springs would have made expansion slow and difficult. What emerges is a picture of cultural coexistence without full assimilation. Mitochondrial DNA, which follows maternal lines, adds another layer to this story. The earliest Cozumel individuals carried haplogroups like C1D and D1, which have been found in Caribbean and Central American archaic populations, people who lived on the sea's edge long before the Maya flourished. Later individuals had mitochondrial lineages like B2, common among classic Maya populations. On the paternal side, Y-chromosome data shows a similar split. The older group carried rare Q1 subtypes linked to early foragers, while later Maya-linked individuals had more common QM3 lineages. This suggests that Cozumel was touched by multiple ancestral streams, each with its own genetic and cultural heritage. For years, Cozumel's ancient history was seen almost entirely through a Maya lens, but DNA is now reframing that narrative. The island was more than a sacred pilgrimage destination. It was a maritime frontier, visited and inhabited by diverse seafaring peoples. These uh, early travellers didn't build pyramids or leave glyphs, but they carried their identities in their bones. Their survival in an isolated, resource-limited environment speaks to their adaptability and resilience. And while the Maya later made Cozumel their own, they weren't the first. The island's story isn't a straight line from wilderness to civilization. It's a palimpsest layered with arrivals, overlaps and forgotten beginnings. Ancient DNA makes those layers visible, and the picture it paints is richer than ever imagined. There's still much to uncover. Current DNA samples come from only a handful of sites, mostly caves and rock shelters. What might we find in submerged coastal zones where sea level rise may have covered early camps? Could underwater archaeology reveal canoes, fish traps or dwellings now lost beneath the waves? Researchers also hope to compare Cozumel's early genomes to ancient DNA from Cuba, Belize and Panama to map the broader network of seafaring routes that likely crisscrossed the Caribbean. The answers will require not just more sampling, but new ways of thinking about mobility, identity, and the definition of first inhabitants. Cozumel, it turns out, was part of a bigger oceanic world. Cozumel was never just a Maya outpost. It was a stop on an ancient maritime highway, visited by people long forgotten and nearly erased from history. Ancient DNA reveals that its earliest inhabitants weren't who we thought. They were coastal navigators, archaic seafarers, and later Maya pilgrims, each layering their story onto the island. Their legacy survives in the fragments of bone, in the soil of cave floors, and now in the sequences of DNA. What other island stories have we misunderstood? Let me know in the comments. If you enjoyed this, like and subscribe for more. And check out the Patreon if you'd like to help support future explorations into the hidden roots of human history.